Okay, so I've uh, created the PCB, you can have a look at it here. It's looking very well. Uh, there's a little bit of rubbing over there, but uh, that doesn't really matter. It won't affect the PCB. So double check it and make sure it is what you want, because at this stage there's no going back. Well, actually at this stage right now there is. You can go back. If this is not right, all you need to do is put some acetone on it and just scrub it off, clean it, and do it again. But anyway, I think this is probably about right. So I'm now going to take my ferric chloride and I'm going to just tip a bit of it on. Just like that. Okay, now it's better, in my opinion, if you if you just keep doing this for about ten to fifteen minutes. Um, if you if you don't shake it, it still works, but it takes longer and it doesn't seem to do it as evenly. Whereas if you do it this way and just shake it, it seems to be a lot better. So I'll come back in ten minutes' time and I'll show you what's happened. Alright, and I've just done that a few times, and it looks like it's done. So, check everywhere, make sure it really is done. And then, um, it's just a case of getting it out and tipping it into a little bucket thing of water. So, I'll just get this out. Like that. Let that stuff drip off there. Then, into this one. And then again, give this a quick shake to clean it off. And it's clean. And you can see there that it, uh, it looks pretty good, actually. There it is. So the next thing we'll need to do is clear off the, um, the toner. And it will start to look really good then. But before I do that... I'm going to um, just save the rest of this ferric chloride. So I've got my bottle here. And I've got my ferric chloride. And you can reuse it. So I'm just going to tip this back in the bottle. And I can reuse it next time. If there's any bits of slush or paper or whatever else, of course... I'll throw that away, wash them out and throw it. But for the most part it's recycle well, not recyclable but reusable. There we go. So now um put that on there, put that out of the way and bring this back. So what are we doing next? Yeah, we're gonna clean it off. So the easiest way to clean it off is just to chuck a bit of uh, acetone on it and then wipe it off. So, um, I'll just go and get some. So here we go, I've got some acetone and some wire wool and a cloth. So, first of all, I'll just dry this off with a, a cloth or a rag or whatever. Dry this off. You can see that some of it's coming off already. So that's done. Now I'll put some of this on, some of this acetone. I only used, um one or two uh, millilitres and just wipe that and you see how easily it comes off I'm going to need a bit more acetone there a bit there and a bit there. In fact, I put some all over it. And now I'm just going to press and try to buff it up so that it gets really shiny, so that I can get rid of any rough bits and get it looking as good as it can. This also cleans it as well, so that when you come to solder it, it's a little bit easier. Um, but with these boards, I always use a bit of flux anyway. So, yeah, and in a second I'm going to pick it up, put it close to the camera, and you can see the quality of it. Now, these things aren't absolutely perfect, but they're pretty good. And there we go. So I'll just move this out of the way now. OK, 
Okay, so here's the board. Now you can see that it's not absolutely perfect. You see here there's like um, like a tarnishing effect, but it does work perfectly. So I'll try and show you the tarnishing effect in a bit more, uh, well, in a better way. Yeah, there you go. You can see all the tarnishing there. But this has no effect on the board. And what it is basically, it's where the transfer wasn't quite perfect. And, um, yeah, basically the transfer doesn't perfectly cover the copper. And then when you put the etching fluid on, it etches tiny little spots away in different areas where you don't really want it to. But anyway, as far as the board is concerned, uh, it will be perfect. It will work perfectly. It's more of an aesthetic thing where it just looks a bit, uh, well, you know, it doesn't look perfect, does it? But it'll, it'll be fine. So the next thing I need to do is drill it. So each one of these holes I have to drill out with my little drill and I'll show you that now. So this is my drill and it's actually a multi-tool that I've mounted and uh, got a special, um, almost like an adapter thing made and I've, I've screwed it on and whatever. But yeah, it's a multi-tool on a stand. Anyway, so I'm going to put this over here. It's got a handle there that you can pull the drill down. Now the drill is a 0.8mm drill bit and um, it's perfect for what we need. Okay, so it's made and it's been drilled. So I'll just um, clean this off again. Sometimes you get bumps, you know, where it's been drilled. You get um, little pieces that uh, are quite sharp. So it's good to try and wipe those off. I think they're called burrs, but anyway. Give that a good scrub again. And there we go. On the other side, it's generally not as bad, but. Okay. You can see there's a couple of areas there. I've just not quite gone deep enough, so I'll just have to touch those up. And here is the finished PCB. So, yeah, let's have a quick look at it. There are some imperfections that you can see. There's a bit of. Uh, well, you can see where there are imperfections, but generally speaking, it's pretty good. Uh, you can see that I've made a tiny mistake where I've misdrilled a little bit there, but it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So the next thing I'll need to do, really, is to just put the uh, components on and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, there you go. So the components will go on from this side. You'll push the components through here and then solder this side. When you come to solder them, though, um, try to use flux because sometimes these things aren't, these contacts are not perfectly clean. So if you use flux, you'll get a really good connection. Anyway, uh, that's how to make your own PCBs for very little money for really very little time. So thanks for watching, as usual, and uh, goodbye.